Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus and my first impressions on the game. I got the game a couple of hours ago today. I have been playing, I have been exploring the region of Hisui, and I have a bunch of thoughts that I want to give just after a couple hours of gameplay. So with that being said, let's jump right into things. I was getting ready for class this morning. I was waiting very patiently for Amazon or for my school to send me an email or a notification telling me that my package had been delivered. And around 1130, I got the email that my package was waiting for me in the student building. I was all excited. I ran there. My class was at 12. There was a very long line, so I just went to the class instead, and I got the game after that. As soon as I got back to my townhouse, I booted it up and I started playing and I am about four to five hours into the game right now and I have a bunch of things to say. Let me get a couple things out of the way first and these are things that I really like about the game. First of all, Pokemon animations and models are crisp and, are and clean and they're the best looking they have ever been in any game in the franchise. They look so full of life, they're incredibly well animated and the fact that they brought down the overall attack and move count to a much smaller number has done a lot to revamp the animations of a lot of these attacks. Also, the fact that battles are seamlessly transitioned to already existing in the overworld, letting the player move around as the Pokemon fight each other, also makes the attacks feel more real and realized and genuine. An interesting piece to these attacks is that you can actually get affected. Of course, the player can faint, the player can black out and lose items. You can drown, fall off high surfaces, get attacked by wild Pokemon, whether they're normal wild Pokemon, alphas or nobles, and you can black out and go back to a camp or to the Jubilife Village. But if your Pokemon is engaged in a battle with another Pokemon and you get in the way physically of these two doing battle, you can be hurt by these attacks. It's such a nice little touch that I didn't expect until I started playing and I'm really thankful for it. Another thing is that the tutorial is strange. It's not, it doesn't feel like it ends much, but it gives you more and more freedom even though you're still in a tutorial phase. So one of the benefits to that is you're being given more control over what you do. You're being given access to different ways of movement. Eventually you get access to the dodge, you get full access to your arc phone, etc., etc. And the game really opens up even though you're already and still in this whole little tutorial stage up to Cleavor, but it gives you a lot of freedom within that. So it's a long tutorial, but it doesn't feel as long as it actually is. Another thing that I really need to give credit to is the music. I listened to a couple tracks that got leaked out before the game officially came out today. One of the ones that I never got to hear was the Galactic Team Headquarters theme. It's my favorite theme we've heard so far in Legends Arceus. It is an incredible track. All of the tracks so far are 10 out of 10s. They are so well done. They pay such a good homage to Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum with a lot of those sounds mixed in to some brand new tracks as well. It's really well done. Another thing that I can compliment and say is really well done right off the bat is how fast you can catch Pokemon, gather resources, and move about the map. You can try to catch a, a wild Pokemon and send out your own Pokemon to gather resources essentially at the same time. And all of these actions will be happening in the background as you're just kind of moving about the overworld. Once you defeat a wild Pokemon in battle, you can just start running away and eventually the battle screens will all subside and it'll just transition you back into a full overworld experience. That is, it's, it's so time, it's to, so time saving. One of the biggest problems with a lot of Pokemon games is how some of the menus take a lot of time. This is, was actually a problem in BDSP. In my opinion, the level up uh, animations just took incredibly long in BDSP and really just for no reason, they weren't necessary. Things like level ups, for that matter, Pokedex entries, Pokemon telling you that they've learned new moves or that they now have the ability to evolve. All of those things happen in the side on the HUD while you're still exploring the region. Everything is seamless. Auto saving is also a lot quieter. You don't notice when it auto saves as much, even though luckily for shiny hunters specifically, you do still have the ability to turn off auto save and do manual save right from your ID screen on your arc phone. So all of these things are real, are not from your arc phone, from your just options, your bag essentially. 
All of these things are big positives. There are a couple negatives that I also want to touch on while also giving some more of my thoughts here. Now, before we go any further, I just want to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course. Subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video or a new short. With that being said, let's jump right back into the discussion. Before I go into this criticism, I want to say that I do enjoy the art style. I think the game looks pleasant in a lot of aspects. I think player models and character animations, all of those things that go into the art direction, are also incredibly well improved from previous games. The expressions on characters, those are incredibly well improved, even from Sword and Shield. This has been something that Game Freak has seemingly struggled with forever, ever since X and Y when they made the jump into 3D, and they're really taking strides to perfect it. Another thing is that you can really add to the overworld in this game, and that's a big positive as well. You can add Pokemon into Jubilife Village, give them to different villagers, and eventually you can see them just existing in the town. It's a really cool feature. With all that being said, there are some very choppy moments in this game, especially when you're in the village, when things are loading in, there's a lot of pop in of different pieces of the overworld that take a lot longer to load in. They do this in two smart ways, and I will give them credit. One is that when you're transitioning into a new area, the first or a new little piece of the area that has to load in, the first thing that loads in generally are the Pokemon. So you can see and kind of plan out how you're going to go across an area. You can see a shiny if it appears, and you won't have it pop in just randomly in front of you. But mountains, trees, different sets of, of grasslands, all of those things are very prone to pop in. Pop-in is okay. If it was running at a solid 60 frames, as an example, it's not. But if it was and there was pop-in, I'd have absolutely no complaints because I understand it. This is a big world. The game engine has to render it somehow. This is running at 30. So you're going to have moments where the pop-in occurs and you're trying to navigate, trying to catch a Pokemon that's trying to charge you, and you're going to get some frame spikes or some frame dips, excuse me. And that is an issue. Now, maybe this gets better. I'm not sure. I haven't really ventured super far into the deeper areas of the game, the more advanced environments. I've seen the first two and that's pretty much been it. But so far, that frame rate is an issue at times. Another issue at times is that it feels as if the battle transition is also a little bit glitchy as well. Now you do seamlessly transition into battle, but it stutters a little bit. This could just be how I'm playing it. I'm running it off and Elgato onto my computer. Uh, I've done a little testing on handheld as well. And while it does make it better just running natively on the Switch, so I will give it that credit, it is still a little bit choppy. Now, what I need to also say is that like a lot of the reviews have been saying, and I actually did a short about this yesterday, going over all the reviews, if you haven't seen that, you should go check that out. There's a card in the corner right now, or you can go to the shorts playlist. The positives, the advancements for the franchise are very clearly going to drown out any of those misgivings. Battles are great. Character dialogue is great. So far from what I've seen, it has a really interesting story. And a Pokemon game hitting on some themes that I don't want to delve into here because I want to save them for its own video, honestly. It's hitting on some very adult themes quietly and subtly, but it's still appreciated that I did not expect. It's a really interesting story between the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan and the Galactic team and how they're perceived and how their existence is perceived in the Hisui region in, conjun in conjunction with these two clans that have been here for a very long time. The relationship between the clans and the characters is interesting. The way people seem to revere you is a little on the nose for the main protagonist uh, for my liking uh, when they refer to you as like an ancient hero or similar to an ancient hero. By the way, this is a spoiler cast. I don't know if you guys knew this is a spoiler video. When they refer to you like that, it does make me cringe a little bit. But overall, the dialogue and character writing has been solid. I'm really enthusiastic about what I've seen so far. And as soon as I edit this video and put it out, I'm going to go right back to playing. No, no partying or anything, any co crazy college stuff for me this weekend. We're going to be playing Legends Arceus the entire time. If you guys have played Legends Arceus, I would love to know what you think down below in the comment section. Do you agree with my positives or my negatives so far? Are there some things that I didn't bring up that you'd like to mention? I would love to hear them. If you guys enjoyed this first impressions video, please be sure to leave a like. It does a ton to help other people find this video. And as I mentioned before, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss any new Pokemon content. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.